Video 4 now, we're on to bag C and we're going to concentrate on making the links for the suspension and then bringing together really all the parts that we've built up to this point. So the shocks, the drive shafts, the axles could come together with the links and then we'll just start the first assembly um, of the main transmission housing. So I'll go ahead, open bag C and we'll get going on the links. I've laid all the parts out now that we're going to use in part 14 um, and you can see this creates the top link and we need to make two of these in this stage. Um, just um, note the orientation of these parts that you get the um, little sections going in the right way round and the angle um, on the eyelets um, correct. The best advice I can give you for, the, for creating these links um, is to build them in three stages. Um, build this end um, and then each of these and then assemble onto the aluminium parts. Um, if you try and wind these little grub screws into the aluminium parts they'll just disappear inside. Um, so if I just show you, at one end you'll see there's a, a slot to put your one and a half mil driver in. And then at the ends of these you just need to make sure that you're going in straight and they will just wind inside. And I'd recommend just wind half of this screw in so if you need to just check offer it up against uh, one that you've not used. You see we need to just go a little bit more. And these are the same for the eyelets at the other end. So again, wipe your grub screw on the end of your driver. Check that you're going in square to the eyelet and then wind it in. OK, I'll go ahead and put all these little grub screws in and then come back and show you uh, mounting them on the aluminium. Now you can see I have one top link finished. Um, once you've got all the grub screws inserted in the plastic parts, what you need to do is just wind on then the aluminium section. You'll find they'll wind on very easily. And just do them sort of thumb tight, that's perfectly fine, on the other side. Now when it comes to putting these ends on, obviously you want the orientation to be correct. Um, so if you wind them on, you can see this one is then pointing in the wrong direction. Just wind that off and you can just add another couple of turns to the grub screw. And hopefully, when you put it back on, It'll then be pointing in the right direction. Like that. These little eyelets, they go from the outside and you just push those in like that. I'll finish this one off and then come back um, to put the drive shafts and this top link um, on the two axles. You can see the front axle laid out here and there's one major difference between the front and the rear axles when you're assembling these links. If you see here the um, screw and the spacer. That one's for the front ones, whereas the rear has got a screw, a much bigger spacer, and also then a grub screw. So just make sure that you get those um, on the right axle. And this is because the wheelbase at the back is longer than the wheelbase at the front. Um, you'll also see there's a small grub screw that's going to go through um, this metal um, part to fix the drive shaft onto the um, axle. That needs to actually make sure that it's seated on this flat section on the output drive um, and also make sure that the drive's not pushed in um, because it'll bind make sure that that's that's pulled right out if you remember when we put the axles together that seating that part was very critical um, and this is why so the grub screw will go on there um, just with a, a, a dab of loctite onto that grub screw and then just tighten that down with your uh, one and a half mil hex the easiest thing to do first um, is attach the drive shaft. So what I'm going to do is just place a tiny grub screw on the end of my driver. Check that my output drives out as we said. Line the two parts up. And I'm just going to add a small amount of the blue Loctite. onto the end of the grub screw. This will then secure it in place to stop the drive shaft coming off. It 
tighten that down you know, not too tight because obviously once the Loctite's gone off um, you know the grub screw isn't going anywhere so like that you'll see now as you turn the drive shaft the ends will then move Okay, put the top link on. It's important to get these in the right order. Um, that gets threaded through that top eyelet. Then your spacer. And then we attach it to that top link. And again, don't over -tight tighten this section. It's very easy to strip the plastic. Okay, there we have it, the top link and the drive shaft. So just a reminder for the rear one, and uh, make sure that you use these three parts. I'll put that together and then we'll come on to making up the um, bottom links and attaching the shocks. Before building the bottom links, I just want to point out um, an error in the manual. You'll see that the um, eyelets that go on the end of these bottom links are said to be from um, the parts tree 800 32, which is this one, um, when in fact that was what we used for the shocks. Um, it's part tree that ends in 05 that looks like this. Um, they're both item number one on both trees, um, but this is the relevant one. Um, I'd just like to go back slightly on the top links. Um, anybody that's building along um, doing the um, standard SCX kit with the CF100 body, you'll see that they don't have this spacer and um, that some of these links are of different sizes because the wheelbase is slightly shorter. I'm going to go ahead and make these links and then I'll show you attaching them um, to the axles along with the shocks. Just wanted to give you a little orientation reminder um, and reiterate about uh, installing the grub screws. Be careful with these um, small parts that go in the eyelets that they're going in in the right direction. You can see this one goes from the inside out and this one goes from the outside in. That's so that the links are securely um, fitted to the chassis um, or the axles. So just to go backwards slightly on the, these, if you just get, when you've got a lot to make, if you just get one grub screw in halfway, then each one you make, you can just offer it up. So you can see the one on the right here, if you offer them up together, that needs to be screwed in much more. Then all you can do is screw that back in and offer it up each time. And that's a much quicker way of installing all of those. This part does often prove to be quite fiddly because um, there's lots of bits now being attached to the axles. Um, best tips I can give you is obviously you're going to need to use your um, uh, spanner if you like that's supplied with the kit and a two and a half mil wrench. You find these bolts that we need to fit, they will actually just thread up slightly into the axle. If you do that, you'll find you can just wind enough through to loop the shock on, hold that in place and just wind a little bit more through, so it's just coming out the end, whoops, a little too much, and then you can add the bottom link, whoops, and continue to wind that through until it comes to the other side at which point the um, nylon nut can just be offered up just hold it on there until it's bitten then with your um, tool you won't get it to seat perfectly um, but just enough, as they're nylon nuts, you don't need to do them up too tight and they will then hold. And then simply whoops, tighten that up. Don't over tighten it, just watch the gap at this side until it closes on the plastic. You don't want these too tight, otherwise it restrict the movement of the suspension. And then remove your spanner. And you have one set done. I'll go ahead and finish the other two um, and then we're really on to making the transmission. See you in a minute. In steps 19 and 20 there are a lot of individual parts um, so do take your time you can see how I've laid them all out 
and then you'll be sure to get you know the right bearings in the right place and the right cogs and pins and all sorts um, so what I try and do is I just do a dry build before we grease any of it just to show you you know how it goes together so the first shaft you've got a bearing this cog that the bearings will actually sit inside he says Pop the bearings in, the shaft goes through. This one has a small pin, goes in that hole. What happens is this cog has got a cut out, and that pin will line up that it sits inside. Bearing on the back, and one on the front. The last one is a plastic spacer. Goes through. These two plates, you need to line them up so that the um, screws go through and marry up at the back. What we'll do when we come to finally fit it is you need to just apply thread lock on those three screws so that they are secured into the back. Last two bearings on. Now we're ready to install it in the casing. It's the small one goes in the middle. The longer one goes up at the back. And this one then drops in the bottom. You should now see that they all spin nice and freely. When you're happy with that, as I say, we just need to take those three screws out, a little bit of thread lock and tighten them back up, and then grease each of these cogs and put them back in. So if I do that off camera and then come back to pop the casing on. Now I'm happy with the gear mesh. I've applied the thread lock to the small screws and the greased all the cogs, as you can see. All turns around. And now it's just putting the cover on the transmission. Simply slots on the top. If you find that there is a gap, you'll probably see that one of the bearings maybe isn't seated correctly. Then we've just got to push that bolt through there. Night unlocking that on the back. And just tighten that up. Hold two halves of the case together. And then finally, a small plastic cover, the axle leg one that goes in the top. There we are. In the next video, I'm going to cover um, steps 21 right the way through to 31. And in those 10 steps, we're going to focus on um, the motor mounting plate and building and setting the slipper clutch and then it's installing um, and finding neutral on the servo the servo plates and then the main sort of steering arms uh, thanks for watching keep subscribing to um, watch the remainder of this series and thanks for watching